guys, what's up? Heather with the Mosco, and today I'm very excited because today we are building the raised garden beds that are going to house my vegetable garden this year. I wanted a vegetable garden, like a legit one, for a very long time, and so this is kind of like seeing it come to action. I'm super excited. So I mentioned a couple videos ago that I wanted to put stock tanks next to our driveway, and I would come out here every day after that, and there's just not enough sun. It would be like noon before it would even get sun, and I mean, what are we gonna grow, like one tomato like that? So I've decided there's an RV pad. We don't have an RV, but the previous owners built an RV pad out here. And so we've decided to put it on this side, um, the side of the RV pad, and I'll show you in a minute. Um, but I'm gonna build, instead of using stock tanks, I'm going to build beds out of cedar fence posts. Couple reasons for that. Um, first of all, the stock tanks, they're very expensive. Um, and I really like that they can be repurposed later. Like if I ever had the opportunity in my backyard, like repurpose my garden beds, I like that. Um, the other thing was that underneath these beds is going to be either concrete on some side and like gravel or something else. So they're not gonna have like a typical raised bed wood an underlayment of soil that they can access other nutrients. So I wanted them to be rather deep-ish. A lot of these raised beds that you buy online, they're like 12 inches or maybe even less. And for stock tanks that were two feet deep, it was getting really pricey. Um, so I started to research other materials. And there's a big debate, it looks like online, about whether or not to use um, pressure-treated lumber. So and I went back and forth on this for a while. So I wanted to give you guys my thoughts on why I chose what I chose. So one of the things living in a log cabin, you get um, really aware of the idea that wood boring insects could infect and infest your home. So you try to avoid those. These are gonna be at least 50 feet from the house. So I'm hoping that that doesn't become a problem. You, to prevent wood boring insects, you would use pressure treated lumber. Pressure treated lumber, even the newer stuff, it says it's safe, it will leach chemicals into your dirt, which then will be absorbed by your plants that you're eating. And they say that they've tested them and that they're safe. However, I just don't wanna take the chance that they find out later that it wasn't safe. Um, so I figure if we're you know, one of the benefits of growing your own food is that you can kind of control what's in it. Let's not start with chemicals. I mean, to each his own. If you want to do that, eh, nobody's judging. You do you. Like, that's fine. But we just didn't want to do that. So, um, the only wood that you could really go with that would be somewhat resistant to wood boring and resistant to like rot from the rain would be cedar um, and or redwood. And cedar fence pickets are pretty inexpensive. So what we're gonna do here is create four beds that are six feet long by approximately two feet wide and about 16 and a half inches deep. And the reason I went with those dimensions, I wanted to have four beds that were six foot long um, but I also wanted them to be, like I say, a little bit deeper because they're not going to have soil underneath the beds to be able to access more nutrients, things like that. So being as they're deeper than a foot, I feel a lot better about that. Um, so what we're going to do here, I'll walk you through kind of the process and then I'll show you as well. I bought fence pickets, cedar fence pickets that were six feet long by five and a half feet wide and they're like roughly half an inch thick. So what we'll do is the long sides of the bed will just be three fence pickets that are stacked on top of each other and then three fence pickets that are two, cut to two feet for the sides. And then to kind of be our brace in the corners, we'll use two by four that we've cut up. We got kiln dried so it wouldn't already be infested with bugs um, and we're just gonna hope that doesn't rot. So let me show you where we're putting this and then we'll get started. So my driveway is here and then we have this RV pad here. We're going to line these up right here. And then we'll also in another video 
take the drip and run it back to the house over there. So it's gonna be four six foot long beds. And then I wanna put an arch in between so we can do some vertical gardening as well. Step one, we gotta get all our supplies down here. So let's go over the supplies you're going to need for this project. You're going to need, if you were building one bed that was six by two, you would need one two by four that's at least six feet. We're going to cut that into 17 inch, four 17 inch pieces. You need a pencil, a tape measure, a speed square, a saw. You're going to need a drill some eye protection and ear protection, a drill bit, some exterior screws that are one and a quarter inch exterior. You're also going to need for one bed eight six foot by five and a half inch wide cedar fence pickets. Optional supplies. Hold on. Optional supplies. Cute kid to help you. And good looking husband who just went inside. So, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is measure out two of our cedar fence posts to be cut into the ends and our two by four. He's already getting it. So we're going to cut this two by four into four 17 inch long pieces. And that's going to be our corner braces. And then we're going to take two of these um, cedar boards and cut them into three, each board into three two foot long sections. Now you'll notice as well that these boards are cut into dog ear shapes. You can cut that off if you want to and then adjust the dimensions. It doesn't really bother me to be missing that little corner, so I'm just gonna behave like they're not here. Okay, so let's get to measuring and cutting. mark all your boards to cut you ask your husband very nicely to cut them all for you and he does because he's so nice so now let's assemble So now it's time to assemble. So with two of your 17 inch cut two by fours, we're going to make the two end pieces first and then our long front and back pieces, if you will. So with your cedar planks that are now cut to two feet a piece, get your, as why it says beagle out of the way. You want beagle? Yeah. Get him out of the way. He's dead. No beagles were harmed in the making of this video, but a beetle died. You want a moment of silence for a beagle? No. Nah. No. Nah. So, we're going to line them up this way. Maybe you can see this really well. And I'll show you from a different angle too, so it'll be easier to see. Now these will be roughly, roughly half an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch longer than these boards are because these are five and a half a piece. So five and a half, five and a half, five and a half is 16 and a half. So these will be a little bit longer. And the reason for that is when we stand it up then, it'd be easier for water to drain out. So, so we're gonna place these here like so, standing up so that then when we have our ends built, this part will be the longer part that we can put our then longer boards on. So, 
let's get started because the baby's about to screw something. If we don't have something for him to put a screw into pretty soon, we're going to be in trouble. So. So here we have one end piece. So you'll notice how this is assembled here. Two by fours on the ends. That way when we have it on the end like so, you can screw your other boards that go this way. So now we're gonna just make another one of these and we'll show you how to put the boards on the front. So now we've got two, despite the fact that I math, I see a whole lot of overhang. So we're gonna add the boards to the front and the back now. So I've lined up the three boards for the other side. You'll notice the dog ear, I have it alternating. So um, straight, dog ear, straight. And I've just tried to get it as flush as I can. This is not very exact, it is a garden bed. And so now we will screw, like we did on the other side, two in each one into the two by four below. And then we'll have one complete. Everybody, 